in the last year or two, I have created a couple of videos, I think three or four, that are related to keeping your plants happy. Most of those videos were unfortunately, for some of you, related to the plants that are inside of your apartment. I do not live in a house, so it's very hard for me to find and test products that would be suitable for the garden use. But this time, with the help of my family and friends, I was able to borrow their garden for a bit and test one of the shelf product that can keep your plants and vegetables happy in the summer. So stick around and we will look at this Zigbee watering device. A lot of countries in the EU, but not just the EU, also in the Northern Hemisphere, where currently it is a summer, are experiencing extreme droughts and of course extreme weather conditions, such as the heat waves. And unfortunately because of that, there is not enough water in the water reservoirs. If you are living in a region where there are no shortages of water and you can still water your gardens, plants, vegetables, etc., then this video may be for you. Today we will be looking at one great watering device that is Zigbee compatible, working with both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. It will allow you to water your plants, track the water usage that was used to water those plants, activate timers so that the valve itself can shut off after a certain period of time, and of course embed everything inside home assistant. Unfortunately, this device that I have been testing for some time now, I will not be able to use myself. I will probably give it to a friend or family member if they finally decide to install Home Assistant and automate their home. But this product is really awesome and if I would have my own garden, I would definitely be using this product here. This device, as featured on the Black Adder's Zigbee devices list, is compatible with both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. While I did test if it works with ZHA, I've added it in my home assistant via the Zigbee to MQTT, as this is a preferred method for me. So let's look at the features of this device, and by the way, the link where I bought this device can be found in the video description. According to the Zigbee to MQTT documentation, this device exposes switch, which is a state, switch means on or off, and I think that it represents the valve condition, is it open or closed. We have information about the battery, and then we have a couple of states in regard to timer. They are timer state, timer, timer, time left. But there are two additional states that this device is exposing, and they are great for home assistant automations. One is called last valve open duration. And as the name says, it is tracking in minutes how long was the valve itself open. But the second thing is called water consumed and it is tracking how many liters of water have passed through this device, so it's also tracking the water usage. What are some of the things that you can do with those two states? First of all, in the combination with timer, and I myself wouldn't use timer here, I would prefer to use timer inside Home Assistant, what I could do is track how long the plant was in the last time it was watered, watered for, in minutes but also I can see and track how many liters have I consumed of water. That way it can help you track how many liters, also converted to the cost, how many euros, dollars, kunas or whatever you have spent on watering your lawn, plants or vegetable garden. If I would compare it with that DIY watering station a Zigbee video I created previously, we can see that this previous watering station created a couple of entities or switches. It created three switches, and those three switches control three pumps. That way you can independently water three plants, but this is for plants inside pots. The motors themselves are very small. They are adequate for what I use them, and I use them each motor for one single plant. On the other hand, this smart irrigation system has exposed a couple of things, as we mentioned. First is the state, is it on or off? This state represents if the valve is open or closed. Of course, there is information about the battery. We have ability to set the timer state. The timer state can be enabled, 
disabled or active. Disabled means that timer will not run. Enabled means that the timer will run. And active, it means that timer is running. If we switch from off to on state, you can see that it changed from enabled to active, meaning that timer is running. You have slider here, or ability to change how long the timer will run for. This is the information about the timer time left. And here we have, as we mentioned previously, information of how many liters of water was consumed and what was the duration the last time the valve was open. Let's look what's inside the box. We have various adapters, the device itself, instructions, and there are also rubber O-rings if you need them for mounting. In order to activate device, you need to open it and install two AA batteries, so AA batteries. The device itself will start the pairing process first time it is activated. You can check if it's working by pressing the button and it will toggle between green and red. Green meaning the water is flowing and red means the water has stopped. Mounting of the device is also very easy. Just make sure that you tighten everything up nicely. After you have tightened everything, just hook up the hose to the device itself. If the water is opened, you can use the button and test if the device itself is working, but also to track the state inside your home assistant. And then, of course, it's all up to you how you will use this device. If you want, you can use the push button on the device itself to open or close the valve, but also feel free to use it inside your home assistant and create automations that would, for example, during the night, water your plants. If you already have some kind of sensor that is tracking the humidity of the soil, you can match this sensor or use this sensor to trick the water if it needs to be triggered for watering the plants. Of course, you can create some more advanced automations. One of the possible cases or one of the possible ways to control this watering device is to check your current forecast and see, for example, if in the next 24 hours there is a forecast for the rain or not, and also check the quantity of the rain expected. Don't forget that Home Assistant has internal plant integration. That plant integration allows you to pull the sensor information into the plant integration and then create some default states. This can definitely help you create some additional notifications or alerts when you need to water your plants. Would I recommend this device? Yeah, why not? It is local only control device, no cloud is needed, using the Zigbee protocol which also is a negative side because we all know that Zigbee has a limited range. So if the device itself cannot reach the rest of the Zigbee network, you will not be able to use it as a Zigbee connected device. Second thing, this device is water tight. I wouldn't call it waterproof, but you can, as far as I've seen and tested, leave it on the rain. The batteries and electronics are protected, which is also a plus side. Don't forget, that you cannot keep device like this or any similar device outside during the winter. Because if water freezes, bye-bye, you will have to throw away this device. You cannot repair it. I've seen in the ZigBee2MQTT database that there are similar devices. So it's all up to you if you will go for this device. And by the way, I will be leaving a link to the web page where I bought it in the description of the video. Or you will be going for some other device that is compatible with ZigBee2MQTT or ZHA. But as I said, I've tested this one, it works with ZHA, it works with ZigBee2MQTT out of box. If you do go for this device, I really do hope that you will enjoy it and that you will also be able to enjoy your garden much more than you are enjoying it right now. While we are here, check that you have already subscribed and that the bell button is on because you want to receive notifications in the future there will be two giveaways. One giveaway will be for my YouTube channel members, who I really want to thank, and that's why I created special giveaway just for them. And the second giveaway will be for all subscribers of my YouTube channel. Why? Because I'm celebrating and I want to give something back to all of you who have supported me for the past three years. And while we are on the subject of YouTube channel members, I really would like to thank those wonderful people that have been supporting me, some of them longer than two years, and have become my YouTube channel members. 
Thank you all for all of your support. But also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. But feel free to post comment down in the comment section below. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.